Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the ESL1 Road to Rio. First map in the books in favor of FaZe Clan. And here on Dust2, they're going to start with a good old B rush, Dean. Yeah, keeping it simple. That is the goal anyway. They had dinked up Letney quite early on. It's unfortunately going to be separated then on the push out delaying that trade somewhat on towards ships but they do still manage to overcome them with that now should be able to get on towards the bomb site and get the bomb down the smoke in place is certainly going to delay those players from the door being able to do too much but all three of these ets at least have already set themselves up outside b right now so they are going to be waiting the bomb only now being put down by cold zero but it will be uncontested for now so it is going to have to be the retake and for the moment they don't have a kit in their possession there is the smoke thrown in towards tunnels which could, in theory, help them out. But for the moment, Faze, they don't have anyone in the tunnels. They're all just ready to try and hold this one. Nico being the first point to contact after Cold Zero goes down, just tapping away with that USP. Unfortunately, not being able to get the final kill, but I was going to say has done enough, and in the end, he did. But it got a little bit closer. Brokey had to come out in the one-on-one -on, -one on top to go ahead and actually claim that pistol for Faze. But they do it. They managed to get off to a good start here on Dust2, and... Hopefully won't let it kind of slip away as much as they did back on Inferno at one point. But they go down 5-0 before being able to get anything on the board. So it's certainly a much better start. Yeah, it feels like they're a bit more warmed up now after that Inferno game's out of the way. They've got off to a good start here on Dust 2. Also, I've seen land some nice shots with the Scout in the past. He was also using the Scout in warm-up. So we'll see what he can do with it here in the second round. As there is the force by the contact and a well-timed push from ships nets him an AK as a reward for his aggression. That's a really, really good start to the round because FaZe only have one more AK left. And now without the B tunnels control, contact have got a hefty stack on this A side of the map. Yeah, they're in pretty good positions how many of them i think a couple of them are still down in the spawn though so yeah unfortunately for those two it's going to be difficult to actually contribute the smokes weren't put in place so that definitely give it did give a little bit of a chance but so far it is phase managing to win out these trades and he continues in that favor as well there as rain is going to be able to drop lenny a good bit of damage though is being done so you certainly can't count out count those ships with the ak nor auto with that scout and speaking of ships he's already creeped out towards the ramp right now finds actually a double kill for himself just cleans it all up. Ships is insane. A quad with that retrieved AK, or rather three with a retrieved AK. Of course, the initial one to steal it away, but fantastic contact. They managed to bounce back. They lose the pistol, sure, but they come out with the force by and leave Faye in an even more difficult position now. Of course, where they're only going to be getting 1,400 to actually afford whatever sort of force by they, force by they want to bring into this round. Obviously, the bomb plant helped them quite a lot. It doesn't give them enough for the buy, but it would give them enough if they want to take the one eco here to actually be able to buy in the following. Now, here I am trying to talk up Otto's ability with the scout and he didn't even need to use it in that round because ships just got all those kills at the end there a quad kill on the round for ships and not much in the way of investment from FaZe as you were saying Rain's got the AK but contact with the full rifles a good chance to build after the second round win and FaZe again they got off that slow start on Inferno if they lose this we could see a slow start here on Dust2 as well Esperanto fighting takes two kills before he's traded but that's another rifle recovered by FaZe Clan oh instantly Ooh. put to use as well yeah giving them yet another it's going to be an AK in the hands of Rain, an AK for Brokey, the M4 for Nico, and suddenly it's a three on three. That phase do have a good opportunity to actually compete in, despite only having the one hero AK bought up initially. Rain trying to challenge on towards A for the moment, though. You do see just that one player in towards Goose being Emmy. He doesn't really want to give any openings to the bomb site. If he was to go down, they instantly would lose A at that point. So playing passive, waiting to see what's going to happen. And of course, we know what's happening. Right now, phase they are grouping up. They're bringing up a bringing it back around towards long but with that as well obviously it's going to give a little bit of a, a a little bit of time for the cts to react they do have ships up close on mid who can come out, who can come over and help and with only one smoke being available right now in the hands of brokey that's not going to cover off that cross perfectly yeah, something phase have to be aware of they may just not use their nades. If they continue to creep up onto the bomb site without being spotted, they can close the distance here. Oh, the timing is terrible for ships. He gets caught with no clue that the players are already pushed up through a long. And just like that, two kills for FaZe Clan. And the round should be done and dusted. Rocky and Rain both with double kills. And even though Letney's sneaking into CT spawn, he's not really trying to win the round at this point.
just a bit of unfortunate timing there, especially for ships. As he moved position, he just gets caught. And, well, FaZe fire right back with a round win of their own. Yeah, not not one to actually let any control slip away from themselves. And they've done so, as we pointed out, without even actually going for the force play. It was just one hero rifle being brought out on rain. That allowed for them to go ahead and, of course, find a couple of kills. But it was Brokey as well with that retrieved rifle being able to get themselves another one in towards middle at that point, bringing it to the three on three. And as they move towards the A bomb site, encountering really no further resistance that was able to actually put up any sort of a fight against them. So, yeah. It's going to be two to one for FaZe. They reclaim the control now for themselves. You can see, obviously, that does put contact into pretty a pretty awkward spot where now they're the ones who get the 1400. And without the, the possibility, of course, like FaZe had the, of having a, a bomb plant down to get the boost in money, they do just come in for the force by with what they can. It's Lightning, obviously, with the one saved rifle. Other than that, though, just a couple of deagles, a scout, and an MP9. So it is not a fantastic one. It's an opportunity for FaZe to try and get a lead going early on on the T side. But I believe that was a nade right there that just absolutely destroyed both called Zira and Nico over towards Long as they were going for that control. And they've also pretty much given up the rest of the map. Letney has found themselves a good bit of info now just by pushing into tunnels. Yeah, he's not going to go any further. He's going to stick around in the tunnels. But just the information, like you said, is pretty important. Lightning Unfortunately, that's the one the rifle. Mm. It'd be really handy if that was the MP9 player, for example. Well, Letney is now rotating away from B after hearing some nades on the A side of the map. So he might get into play with the AK if FaZe commit to this A long aggression, which looks like the most likely outcome right now. Nico being down below half health decides to take the AWP. And Brocky lining up another smoke. So FaZe are committing to this A site and they're going to have to overcome this A stack. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be an easy task by any means. Once they close in this distance for the moment, the smoke is kind of keeping the vision away from the miter, so they don't know exactly what to expect on the other side of this bomb site. And Emmy's actually going to be the first one to force the contact, takes the beacon towards the ramp, drops the bomb, and gives them an advantage on FaZe, who are still just kind of prolonging this push forward. It has taken so long for them to find any ground at all. Coldzera does what he can, as does Nico. Actually, it's a small bit of damage there with a the wall bang, I believe. Unfortunately, not really anything substantial. And it's now left with eight seconds with 13 health and an impossible round to win. He just, at this point, has to save the up over. Contact Fosh straight back in with their own force buy. And neither of these teams wanting to give up control early on. It's going to be a very scrappy start indeed. You imagine also that we are going to see another buy here. It's not going to be bad for FaZe. Olaf has loads of money. Nico can drop a rifle. Coldzero is the only one who is low on money. So he's going to be the one that gets given that rifle. And they're right back in with another gun round. And it's actually Contact who overall have the worst weaponry. Yeah, that's, uh, again, just how this game has been going so far. Yeah, both teams having to have weaknesses, but a bit of a surprise that it's contacts that overall do have the, the weaker weapons. Only two premium rifles for them on the CT side. Let's see if that ends up costing them. FaZe have got the ability here to try and regain the lead, and then from that point, hopefully they can actually close out the follow-up round, because both teams have struggled to do that so far. Nice nade onto Roki, but Ships goes too far into the open. Nico is waiting in the wings with the AK. He gets a kill, and they're pulling the trigger here onto the B-bomb site. Team damage done by Letney. Oh no, he thought he was getting flanked from mid. It was his teammate trying to help him out, but he gave him a rude welcome to the B-bomb site, and surely this has got to be a save now. Yeah, it looks like finally you are going to see one of the teams being able to overcome one of those uh, weaker investments, potentially. Oh, sorry, no, it was FaZe. I forgot because it was the full buy. I'm, I'm confusing myself. Yeah, just the fact that they had such a strong investment is crazy. And yeah, no, they made that look easy. As you said, you haven't seen the, the team assist being found there a moment ago on towards Esperanto. He was one of the AK players as well. That's what makes that so kind of heartbreaking. He had the weapon that really could have helped him out on towards defending that B-bomb site and... It just kind of spirals out of control. FaZe bounce back again. Otto is not going to be allowed to save this AK either, I don't believe. You can see him just trapped in the pit at the moment. The question is how aggressive the FaZe want to go. Because they, ideally they want to try and build up some money in case uh, Contact are able to do it again and are able to bounce back and continue the fight. Because they will likely buy. I mean, they're looking at a double eco to at least a couple players. Oh, Otto peeks up. Will he expect a second player on the bomb site? That's actually the op as well, so he ideally at this point just doesn't want to reface. Yeah, a couple of flashes in trying to delay those players if they were up close. So the AK gets carried over, that's one positive, but again, back and forth. 
contact. As I said, two players looking at a double eco. They likely buy into this one. And yeah, that's the goal. A scout being dropped over. That's all Otto can afford to, to really share with his teammates. And that team damage there that happened on the B site, that's the kind of thing you can laugh off if you're winning rounds, if you have the lead. But it can it can definitely affect morale to an extent if you're losing. And Contact right now are on the back foot, and they've got this weak buy again. So this is the chance for FaZe, and they're going to go for a B rush. Oh, wow, look at those nades. Huge damage across the board. Ship's already with one kill, but Olaf picks up the much-needed trade frag. And let me hear stuck at the back of the bomb site. He's burning. The Molotov takes him down, but he at least gets one kill. And again, the rotate is here, but finally, I think FaZe Clan might have just done enough. Esperanto only on 19 health, but what a scrappy round here on B. Oh, god damn. I was so afraid. Even in our previous series earlier on when we had Heart Legion up against um, Navi, wasn't it? Yeah. Of course. We seen that B rush up against the weaker pistols, against the Deagle, kind of costing them against just the, the weaker investments in general. So I was really scared after that nade done so much damage to Rain, Nico, and Olaf. But now they managed to overcome it. Olaf goes ahead and actually gets his first couple of kills on the board as well. Again, similar to Inferno, he was just kind of chilling for a while. He eventually comes in and gets himself something at least once he's needed. He's had a he had a little bit of a slow start for sure here. And could be in trouble right now. Yeah, I mean, 12 health. Okay, that works though. Jumping in and out, just swinging his mouse as quick as he could. Esperanto didn't even chew. At least I didn't hear any shots being rang off. But yeah, FaZe, they finally do it. They put together two rounds. They're able to go ahead and overcome the force by now we do have to just see contact taking a full eco. Apart from a Zeus so far, that's the only investment we see for ships. It's an interesting investment as well. Normally, it's just really what you hope for with the Zeus is that you're going to be able to get a kill and take the weapon. So you really do need a player to be kind of playing individually at that point. Because obviously, if they're with a teammate, someone's going to be ready to follow up and ensure you won't be retrieving that weapon. And already, Roki actually find themselves an opening kill there down mid. Finding them as they look to cross over, they actually pushed aggressive into the lower tunnels, which I don't believe they're aware of. But with the Xbox smoke down, they're not really able to spot them pushing up short either. So there's not a lot to be done as they lose control of that A-bomb site. And there's Brokey with a second even. Yeah, keeping them at range, landing a couple of good shots. Now Nico will close to this it's somewhat, but the AK is just chewing them up. The players without Kevlar quickly dealt with. I think it's only three body shots needed for the most part. So... Easy pickings there for FaZe Clan, who have finally got control of this game with a 5-2 lead. And now we're going to get back to, to some more normal Counter-Strike, I guess. Some actual gun rounds coming through. This is like the first, it feels like, full gun round for both teams. But even then, Contact are lacking an AWP, and they've got a FAMAS on Emmy. So there's one or two weaknesses in there for the CTs. No kit either, for what it's worth. Yeah, which could be a massive issue. Let's have a look. How many times has the bomb been planted? One, two, three, four times so far, at least that the round has ended with the bomb explosion, or by, by time, actually, sorry, one of those was. So three might have been a little bit wrong. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely is going to be a potential issue. They do come down into a retake. Oh, didn't realize that there was a bit of room, actually, for Rain to peek around that Molotov, apparently, because Esperanto, he was standing out in the open, I think with a knife, maybe. He wasn't prepared at all for that peek to come in. So a good bit of damage in the beginning of this round has been put in favor of FaZe. And also, with the pressure they've been shown, they have forced pretty much all of the utility out of the hands of Contact. With a minute and ten seconds remaining, and all they have is a smoke and two flashes left over. FaZe have much more of a luxury with their utility, though. Using loads of nades as they move on to this A-bomb site. Four players pushing up through short while Olaf lurks through mid. Otto gets one kill on the hole, but in comes Rain for the quick swing and the quick trade. Esperanto able to get one kill there, but Olaf is cutting off this rotate. Easy kill for the Swede. There's still action on this A-bomb site, though. Esperanto has somehow survived this entire time. He's really slowed this down. He's really caused an issue, but finally they deal with Esperanto, and Olaf somehow turns that around. Letney thought he had him in the back, but it's not meant to be. It's Emmy with the FAMAS who's left alone, and he's got the first kill. Olaf is going to peak this. Emmy almost gets a kill onto the second man, but Olaf survives on a slither of health, and now Emmy keeps on going. This Famas doing oh huge God, damage. Bomb. It's part, it's safe. He doesn't have the kit, though, yeah. so Olaf can close the distance, and he's got a molly. He's not doing he it, though. No idea. He's not doing it. He's not moving. Even Shh. if he threw the molly now, it wouldn't be good enough. There's not time. 
balls of steel on Emmy, and unfortunately Olaf making the incorrect decision. He must have presumed there that there was a kid in play, that the bomb was tapped and the Emmy was slowly creeping over towards short. Just because there was still so much time on the bomb, but no, Emmy just went straight for that defuse. And it gives contact their third round. It looked, it looked like FaZe were about to continue to just run away with that lead, but no. They fight back into a contact, they give themselves the opportunity now for the for the ability to still bring this up into a really good CT side. The issue is they still need to overcome at least one more gun round here, and even after this one, most of the players on phase do still have quite a bit of money left over, but ooh, that's a decent start. Not the kill on Olaf, but the shot is connected from the off there over towards B, so a bit of damage being found. Oh, and ships, look at this. Oh, that's risky. There's a small gap, I believe, in that smoke. I'm not entirely sure why the bomb was planted safe on the site there in the first place. I thought they had the short control because they came I don't, from short Maybe in the Olaf first place. didn't realize. That, that was really strange. I have no idea. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that Olaf didn't seem aware that it was planted safe and that the stick was a possibility. Because he, he must have heard the defuse, surely. Uh, yeah, no, he heard the defuse. I presume that he just at that point was taking the gamble that yeah, the bomb yeah. wasn't being stuck. That he, he would have just tapped that and then was trying to get a little bit closer to short to hold like an off angle. So Olaf didn't want to show himself. And then when he did pop out, realized, oh, damn, he must be on the bomb. It's not planted for me. What am I meant to do? And the answer was there was nothing he could do. Always a sad position to be in when you know there's nothing you can do to win the round at this point. But that's what happens. Contact get their third round on the board. And Brocky, I think it looked like he was lining up a nade there. He's not going to throw it. Phase are grouping up around this B bomb site though. Smoke going mid to B. It looks likely to be a split onto this B bomb site. And Ships has got the flank, but it's an MP9. Oh, it's a struggle, but eventually he gets the kill. Yeah, but the issue is the commitment coming into B in the meantime. It's not really that much of an issue as I was gonna make it out to B because Otto just hits all of the op shots. And despite one trade being allowed back from Brokey, Otto was still chilling in the back of the bomb site on the platform and ships. He was ready to rotate in through the door. Finds the final kill and contact indeed managed to, tra uh, to chain together a couple of rounds. Get a bit of momentum going here for themselves. I was expecting Dust 2 to be definitely a lot easier than, uh, than Inferno in this matchup for FaZe. But, uh, I mean, Contact are not off to a bad start by any means, despite actually losing out kind of that initial battle of forced plays. They are able to then once again stabilize once they get the full gun round out. And again, Otto, within the opening seconds of the round, has managed to leg down a player for FaZe. Unfortunately, not getting these kills, but he's been giving them good advantages early on. They do lose the long control, though. They're not going to be able to hang on to it. They don't really want to try and challenge too aggressively. Gives FaZe a, a fair few options. They have a couple of smokes if they wanted to try and smoke the cross and push A-long. They do have to deal with the man at car, though. There is one Molotov in the hands of Olaf, so this position could be mollied out, and Esperanto has just left it, so that won't be an issue any longer. Very much an A-sided setup here for contact on this CT hold. Letney's being tasked with solo holding B. Ships is even playing in CT spawn, more leaning onto the A side of the map. So Contact feel like they have a, a good read on the situation here. Phase remain fairly undecided, but with three players stacked to A long, it's looking more and more likely that they will commit to this A side of things. Yeah, especially as they're also trying to find this short control, which, I mean, has been kind of given to them not really the case you do see need to see the ct is challenging this position words come out letters come out nico he's waiting for the bullets to come out and he up right there for auto and he manages the bait one out that gives him the chance to pounce forward catches the headshot esperanto actually finding one in the meantime and that nade is massive from letney it denies the bomb plant, it slows it down, and now it's a man advantage for the CT side as they work in. The bomb only now being planted. Brokey trapped on that bomb site with low health, and as he's being pushed by both of those CTs, there really wasn't much of a fight that he could put up. Five to five, contact the fought back into this. They have lost the player though, so I doubt they plan on going four on five. Oh, there we go, Esperanto's back. I'm sure your, your hood was messed up. Who was a traitor who joined the contact team there for a second on the custom HUD? I didn't quite see. I wasn't no. I wasn't fully paying attention to the HUD. You always get duplicates when yeah. someone's out of the server. Oh, they're taking a tactical timeout anyway. Maybe just making sure Esperanto is fully back. That he's not going to end up leaving anytime soon. 
Double up setup coming out for contact. They've finally brought it to a position where they can afford these two orps. And it's FaZe who have the money issues with the pistols in this round. I am maybe slightly surprised to see a fair few Tech 9s in there for FaZe. Normally, they just love to buy those deeds and just try and land headshots. But so many Tech 9s suggest we might just see a fast-paced play for them. We might just see some quick aggression, and they might just try and run down one of these bomb sites. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's maybe B, because they've run into quite a few players at the A site in a few rounds now. So a fast B play here might make sense for FaZe. We'll see if that's what they're going for. Yeah, with the weaker buy, it would especially. Did that smoke just hit a teammate and stop them from covering up? I think the, so. That happens sometimes, even on pro teams. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. It it didn't really give them a spot to uh, the chance to spot anything. I don't think on the side of Faze, Cold Zero was kind of around there, but he only had a deagle, so I don't know how much he really would have been able to see. Auto director is useless for me right now, apparently. Yeah. Ships unfortunately only able to find the one before he sinks over on that B bomb site, and then Letney as well going to be dropped by the deagle of cold. This has actually gone pretty well for them. They've traded out into the three on three as they get control of the bomb site and should be finding that plan pretty easily. Esperanto though, he's ballsy straight through with the smoke on the other side. It gives them the cover to go ahead and get one. Delaying the bomb plant and also dinking down Rain. And yeah, with that from Emmy through the smoke, pretty much seals the round now. Unless Rain pulls off an incredible clutch, which with nine health is going to be very difficult. I was going to say has the op and was looking to try and face him towards middle, which if he had have done, he would have realized was open and could have ran it to A, but no time was given to him. Instead, the peak just came through from tunnels. Oh no, the HUD is messed up. It thinks that Esperanto did 1,000 damage in that round, <laughs> which I don't not? think he did. Oh, oh. not quite. Okay. Unless he... I can confuse. I was confused. I no, no. I mean, unless he killed all his teammates as well, which <laughs> I didn't see. Even then, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it was actually over a thousand for some reason. Hopefully that will be sorted out now. Faze, though, it felt like Olaf took a long time to get that bomb planted. I thought he was just going to get the bomb down before he was taken out. But maybe he delayed it slightly. Maybe I'm just misjudging time. Who knows? Either way, I know that FaZe didn't get the plant in the round, which is unfortunate for them. But they brought it fairly close. They've kept contact economy in check ahead of round 12. And they've got a chance now that they're back onto the guns to try and break that CT economy. Yeah, that is the issue for contact, despite being in the lead, as you said, the, the economy just being so fragile. If FaZe bounce back with one, then immediately they would likely be able to find another round off the back of it being up against a very weak investment. So contact, they need to keep this up. If they can actually pull out 10 rounds here on the CT side, that would be fantastic. I would say at that point, they're still in contention of being able to make this a three map series. Well, Zerido gonna creep out mid. Ships looked like he was ready for it. They might not expect the op to be also up close as well, but it doesn't matter. Rain's able to get the trade. Nico just lurking around short gets two. And this one's done. Letney's left alone on B. Sure, he gets that one kill, but now they realize that, and they're just sprinting that bomb up through the spawn over towards A. Straight through the CT spawn. Now, it was a little bit dangerous. If he had a peek out the door, then maybe he could have spotted the back of them as they were moving in. But, of course, as we see, that did not happen. Instead, Letney is running away with the AK. As we pointed out, the economy for them is not looking too good. That one rifle in the next round will be a massive boost in comparison to what they'll actually be able to afford. Oh, I don't even think that's going to be allowed. Rain's right below him. Ooh. The nade goes in, doesn't actually do any damage. But now they know where he is. FaZe though, do they want to send players after him? Look at their own money. Okay. okay. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that makes it uh, a bit easier. They don't really have to make that decision because Rain just taps off the head. I, I like also that Brocky planted on top of the box on the A site after that previous round where Olaf couldn't get the clutch in the 1v1. Just make sure the plant up on top of the box, visible from basically every single position. He's probably like, all right, guys, it's on the box. Yeah, on the I box. Repeat, on the <laughs> box. One Deeg for Esperanto. $700 invested in this round for contact. So not many chances for them into this one. Esperanto is currently playing close at the mid doors with the Deagle. Or I think he might be back in CT spawn. Oh, Emmy with the USP. Lands a dink there. Rain taking a fair bit of damage. Again, FaZe should be fine in this round. But you never know. Oh, good shot lands onto Nico, but he lines up both of them. And there we go. It all falls apart for contact, as you would expect. Well, that was quick. He took a bit of damage on three players. Unfortunately, if any of those kills really had gone the other way, then maybe there was a chance for contact, but not allowed. 
Letting he's alone with the USP. <laughs> Obviously, he could still maybe catch a couple of players. Yeah, he's running around into the spawn. Will they hear those footsteps? I don't think so. Not quite yet. There is one player now looking. So, yeah, they definitely did at this point. Rain, fully focused, has an easy kill on that Kevlarless opponent with a USP. You're not really going to be expecting them to, to really be able to fault in that fight. So, FaZe, they reclaim the lead. They are now up 7-6. to six. We did see kind of a streak of four rounds there for contact, but they need to get a little bit more. If they can add even one more round here on the CT side, 7 is not too bad. Those two is a map that isn't really super biased towards either side. But the issue is for Contact, as they buy back in, it is not fantastic. Again, an issue we've seen a few a few times for them is that they can't get the Diffuse kit out. They also have a couple of amasses, unfortunately, which is not ideal. But challenging towards Long, I was going to say Nico should be falling back now. Decides to go forward instead of back through the Molotov and ends up getting taken down. That's an op now for the CT side. That's a really good recovery. The only Ooh. issue is they're losing the actual bomb site itself because FaZe have just sprinted straight up short. Maybe it was the ultimate gambit from oh. Nico. Oh, nice shot from Rain. Otto got one with the AWP that was recovered, but instantly Rain is there to make something happen, make sure that he doesn't get away with any more. Still a chance for contact, but they're pretty slow on the rotate and they don't have a kit right now. Otto didn't drop one either, I don't think. So they're going to have to be very quick if they want to retake this. And Rain just taps away, eventually finds the headshot he was looking for. You can already see Contact getting the hell out of there. They're giving this round away. FaZe are about to get an eighth on the board. And Esperanto, oh no, knife out. Not the best position for him. Cold Zero gets an easy kill. Letney now at least has the information. He will pick up the trade frag. And it looks like two guns will be saved for Contact at the very least. But it's not looking too good for them in terms of their money heading into the last round of the half. Here come the auto snipers. Here we go. Oh, Lord. Two of them as well alongside the op. Could they not? No, nah, they couldn't really afford any other ones, I don't believe. Rain? Yeah, I was wondering. He, he does have the AK there. He had picked the back up for some reason. I feel like these do damage way less often than you'd expect, though. Yeah, there we go. They yeah, just come safely. I was going to say, it, it's kind of... When people are spamming them, they do a rhythm to it. So I feel like the, t the CTs are able to kind of predict it as they're crossing over and manage to avoid it a lot of the time. But yeah, no damage at all being done by them. It doesn't really matter, obviously, to phase. They will still have the overall better weapons in this round by a pretty decent amount with the FAMAS and Deagle, unfortunately, being stuck in the hands. Alongside an MP9 there for Emmy of the, the contact players. So it's, it's really not ideal. But FaZe are taking this one slow. Not going to be any B-rushes or anything coming in against the weaker boy. We've seen a, a few teams go for those. Oh, never mind. Ships just wins that fight. The Molotov lands right on his position. Cold Zero looked like he was going to do everything right there. And then Ships just gets a, a quick dink, a quick kill. And now Nico's looking for a way back into this round. Oh, this is dangerous. He's moving in. Quick headshot onto the first man, just hunting down his prey. It's almost like he could smell Otto on the bomb site there. He knew exactly where to aim to get that kill. And Esperanto also caught in the back. Nico's not taking anyone lightly here as he gets two kills on 2A, and Contact have to try this retake, even if it's unlikely. Oh, wow. Yeah, they have to go for it. As you said, okay, well, it was unlikely. It's now become a lot more likely with that double kill on the MP9 being found by Emmy. He has the op as well, finds Nico on the cross, and now Olaf pinned in on that bomb site. One on two at this point, but he's already dinked up, and Chips is not going to let him get away with anything else as he confirms the headshot, confirms the seventh round for Contact, and... As I said, leaves them in a pretty decent position. Seven on the seat. After a fairly even first half, it's still anyone's game heading into this CT side for FaZe and the T side for Contact. Let's see what they've got. Oh, it's the B-Rush. This is exactly what FaZe did on the pistol round and Contact are taking a page out of their opponent's book, moving into the B site and Letney gets the initial kill. There's still a man at the back of the bomb site. Rain also fighting for the site. Oh, Rain with three huge kills. And now it's all up to Olaf to try and get these frags and he's doing it. He gets it with the last bullet and FaZe managed to deny the B play. Well, that was crazy. Hawkeye, I'm, I'm going to guess you didn't even notice this because obviously there was so much going on. I barely noticed it, but did you see Otto got a knife kill? 
I did. I literally had no clue, mate. I, <laughs> I, was, I was so focused on what was happening on my screen. I, it was yeah, too much. I barely noticed that either. There was a lot going on. There were rain. But yeah, Otto ended up knifing someone there Jesus. over towards the box on the B-bomb site. I can't even remember who it was he knifed at this point. But yeah, you can see even his economy here, they're in a pretty decent spot. Losing the pistol obviously is a pretty big issue now as FaZe get a, a kind of firm hold on the lead, especially since this one is an eco, only really Esperanto decides to buy up a Deagle on some Kevlar. They will have a good buy in the next round overall, but at that point it's going to be 10 already for FaZe. That opening gun round here on the second half is going to be a necessity for Contact if they want to start building their way back into this map. And obviously with that into the series, because they are already down by one map. I always feel like there's something kind of baller about just not buying a gun when you go into the second round. Like, nico has got the USP here. Because you know your opponents are going to just be on pistols. So you're just like, okay, I can take the USP. Probably win these fights. He is going to be tested. Here we go. Oh, Nico, Nice first shot. Ooh, clean kills. It's not Nico on that third man, but it's still nicely done. Rain also helping him out. And FaZe get the double digits. The tenth round that they were looking for. There's that knife coming into play, though. Otto can afford the AWP now. Yeah, that's what I said. It, it helps them out massively. Otto being the one especially who got it. Otherwise, they could have dropped it over to him, but he gets it himself. It allows everyone else to buy up their own their own rifles and utility and such. But it's still not the, the perfect buy here. Esperanto obviously having spent a little bit in that previous round is limited to having no nades, unfortunately, behind his AK. Overall, this is the buy that they do need to make work, and unfortunately, that's not a good start. The flash in completely blinded Esperanto. Nico was able to easily achieve the shot with the AWP. Rain nearly getting caught in mid. Actually takes quite a bit of damage, even a bit of spam as he backed off. But the MP9 is ready. Molotov through the doors, forced forward, and they've just given him the bomb as well. Brocky was desperately searching <laughs> for a gun to pick up. The E button was not his best friend there, but he eventually picks up the AK. And yeah, for what it's worth, Nico. Oh, wow. Okay, Letney gets a kill on Cold Zero over on the B site. I'll hold my point because there could be a chance. What is happening? What? Otto? What is going on? What is happening right now? Otto eventually gets flanked out and Letney has it all to do. It's not going to happen for him. Brocky is in position. I was going to say that, that Nico having the USP in the previous round is why he could buy the AWP in the first place. And that's why he got the opening pick. So that was kind of cool. But then the round just kind of turned into chaos. Yeah, I mean, we've had a few of those already so far. Even that pistol a few moments ago was quite chaotic. Oh, that's, as I said, unfortunately, a round that Contact did very much need to pick up if they wanted to start building their way back into this series. And losing it now, again, puts them on one of those weaker investments. You have a couple extra players being able to get Kevlar, at least, with some Deagles. Overall, though, we're not expecting a lot from Contact in this round, and it should be FaZe bringing themselves up to 12. At that point, Contact are going to have to make a massive recovery. And on a map like D2, where we were already expecting FaZe to be having an easier time than back on Inferno, you just you find it hard to believe that they're going to be able to achieve this comeback right now. But you can never count them out. Players like Esperanto and Ships and Otto, they can just pop off out of absolutely nowhere. And even Emmy, he's been playing really well for them. Vicious shots actually do a bit of damage on terrain. I think two of those landed to the chest through the door. Normally you'd expect the rifle with its higher output of bullets to do more damage there. And Emmy has been taken down to 32 health. An AWP shot also connecting now. Brokey doing even more damage. And this time it's an AWP shot through the wall, but straight to the head. So it gets the kill straight up onto Letney. And that's the last smoke used by Contact. They're not even using that smoke to move up to A. They're actually going back to mid. So no nades left for them. Just the deeds to try and get in this round. There's a smoke there. There we go. Emmy picks up a smoke. That's going to help them. Now they can smoke off CT and maybe make some progress towards B. As you say, that though Brokey on the op is going to be the one that they have to overcome. And he's already gone ahead and shut down two thirds of their remaining attacking forces. It was only ships left standing. He actually gets spammed through the smoke by a USP as well. That is an unfortunate way to go down. That's not how you want to be dying. True smoke to a USP. Either way, though, it was only the pistols. There was a bit of Kevlar being upgraded for contact. This is as they come back onto the guns. And if they lose this one, it's going to be 14-7 before they see, they see another rifle round. And at that point, the comeback is definitely out of reach up against a team like FaZe. So this is where they need to make it happen. They have the up again for auto, but they are going to be going up against a double up as well from FaZe Clan. I was a bit worried there that they were just bringing it straight towards B, but nah, just separating out for the default. They'll look to try and get that control over towards short, 
where I believe already quite a bit of aggression has been shown by FaZe. Yeah, they tried to get that boost up there to see if they could find an opening kill around short in the beginning. Not able to connect, and it does give Contact a chance to move forward. They were able to back those short players off. With that push now, man, Rain though doesn't want to give them any room to move forward. Flashing through, but Cold Zero is he falls on the B bomb site. That's this round done. There we go. Contact finally getting some success in this second half. I was going to say that this was feeling somewhat reminiscent of the first map in that phase were taking over once we got to the second half. But Contact have at least won one around here in this one. They should be pretty okay to save. I think Contact will be fairly focused on their own economy. And okay, never mind. Esperanto walks through the mid doors. Easy shot for Brokey to land with the AWP. Now Contact do need to be a bit careful. They're not going to want to lose too many more guns in order to keep their economy strong. Ships can survive here at this car position from the bomb, so he is fine. Wow, he has a, an AK with only 56 kills on the stat track. It's fresh, it's brand new. Hopefully get some more kills on it throughout this game. It's still an, uh, a relatively innocent AK, Harker. Exactly, it's not seen too much yet. Even the factory new ones after a while become battle scarred mentally. Oh, that's it's so sad thinking of guns as having like emotions. <laughs> it would be, be awful. We're gonna have a, like a fake deep spam in the chat or something. No, yeah, imagine if you were a gun a and you were just you were just sentient and aware of what's uh -oh. happening, but you can stop it from happening. We're just seeing the straight of B-Rush right now. Oh, called Zero. That was a little bit of an awkward spray at first. Unfortunately, only gets the one. He then has a player dropping off from above on the boxes and on towards the bomb site. Brokey not able to find anything. I think, again, they've just been immediately forced to call for the save. That is two very quick rounds in a row now from contact. Yeah, that'll do them. They'll be happy with, with that. Just a quick B play to get them around. It's always nice when you can win a couple of rounds like this. Just off the back of the fast B plays. And now FaZe, again, are trying to save... This time, they definitely need to save all three of these guns to feel somewhat okay into the future round. Again, it's a gentleman's agreement this time. Both teams happy to hold on to their weapons. Contact will stick in their territory on the B site. FaZe will stick in their territory over on A long. And Chips is having a great time just standing on top of his teammates' heads. 12-9 though, Contact getting themselves back into this game. And the money for FaZe Clan should be fine with those saved guns. They can drop some for their teammates. But they've got to figure out what's been going wrong with this B-hold here. Yeah, I mean, in that previous one there anyway, they did try to set up the crossfire between the car and then on the bomb site with Brokey. But unfortunately, since they since Cold Zero was tucked in just on the bomb site, they were able to cross over. They got some players to the platform. They had the ability for the double swing to come in, and since Brokey went down so quickly, and since Cold Zero unfortunately took so long to get himself that first kill, it was a little bit of an awkward spray at that point. Yeah, left in the four and three, or rather, yeah, four and three. And for the remaining three players of base plan, it made the most sense to just go ahead and save again. Right now, though, we're not going to see the initial focus on towards the B bomb site. It is still a quick pace play, definitely to kick the round off from contact. But instead, they just want to get that long control. Get themselves into a, a spot where they can slow things down now. They can maybe move back and even try and get the short control as well at that. And, of course, at that point, really limit the CTs, then make it very difficult to actually hold that bomb site down. Uh, they might actually just leave long here. Yeah, I can completely off. Still making a bit of noise. They do have Emmy, I believe, sticking around for the moment. He's trying to clear out car and such. But most of them are moving back to the spawn, as you can see, over towards tunnels. So they are going to go back towards focusing on B, the bomb site that they've been finding the success on over these past couple of rounds. And at the moment, the bomb site, which is only being defended by one player, and even then, he's playing it quite passively from the window. Yeah, this is a surprisingly passive hold to me because Rain is pushed up on A short right now. So unless they're very, very scared of A long, surely they should have at least one player committing to the B site. But Brocky's still not looking here. Finally, Brocky now commits to the B side of things. He is going to need assistance, so the push coming in to this B-bomb site. Cold Zero here to help his buddy out, but Brocky's mollied out of position. Cold Zero needs the trade, and he almost gets the double, but Ships is able to keep contacting control of this B-site. And unless we see some quick kills for FaZe, they're in trouble here. Olaf tries to do what he can, but it's not happening for them. They lose the B-site again. And FaZe should probably save at this point, but the nade is going to land. That's a free kill onto Esperanto. 
In a 2v3 though, it's still not really possible, especially with another smoke for the doors. Nah, it hasn't prompted them to go for the retake. As you said, especially with the smoke going down, there really just was so little chance that they'd actually be able to make that retake happen uh, successfully, even with that kill from the nade. So saving over is the best idea. You see Cold Zero is on 450. He can be dropped a weapon with 2400 loss bonus coming in. You can see the other players being able to buy for themselves. So FaZe will come back onto a full buy yet again. But Contact have now taken themselves three rounds in a row. They've been doing so quite convincingly. And as you pointed out in that previous round, the B-bomb site has been an issue for them here over these past few rounds. So how do FaZe now adjust to it? Uh, but we do have to give uh, props to Contact there. The way they took the long control in the beginning, of course, to try and restrict info for FaZe to make it a little bit easier to try and even pull players off of that B-bomb site. Knowing, okay, yeah, we've took B now a couple rounds in a row. FaZe are probably going to try and adapt to that. So let's go long in the beginning and then go B later on in the round rather than just early like we had the previous couple. And yeah, it worked out really well for them. I wonder if we're going to see a switch up of the players on that B site at any point. Right now it is Cold Zero and Brocky again going back to the B side of things. It's the A-long fights that might be the important ones though. Nades from contact seem to have forced FaZe away. There's very little damage done, but the flashbangs and the smoke have made FaZe uncomfortable. So they've decided to fall back. Nico is hanging around at the car with the AWP here. Otto's just crossed though. Nico's not in the best position, but he lands the first shot. Smoke about to go down. The Molotov lands at car. Nico smokes it anyway. And now they're going to start to close in on his position. But Nico, oh, the flash was good, but he misses the shot. Gets it second time of asking. And Nico ducks back into the smoke. Somehow still alive. Nico firing on all cylinders right now. A third kill for him on the round. Nearly a fourth, but these Molotovs might be his death sentence. He's still going. Nico with a quad kill on the hold. And Contact just can't kill this man. Yeah, no, he he could still get the ace for himself at this point. There is the flank, though, coming in, and also everyone else just getting ready to swing from the bomb site. All right, Otto gets one. At this point, they're like, yeah, let, let's not. Let's wait for Cold Zero to get into position here on this flank. Let him try and make a play himself and uh, eventually just have Nico peek out to go ahead and confirm the ace. Indeed, just fantastic. That 4K was insane. The final kill, it was a little bit harder to hype up because at that point, of course, Otto was pretty much counted out, around, out, counted out of the round. 13 to 10 phase, they bounce back finally with one for themselves after giving away con uh, giving away three, conceding three rounds in a row to Contact. The issue is, in those three rounds, Contact didn't build up the most amazing economy. They lived with three in two of them and lived with four in the other round. So they got enough money to allow for the buy here, but they've spent pretty much everything into this round. If they lose this one, at that point they are left in a very difficult spot deciding if they want to force or if they want to eco and play for overtime. I feel like there's going to be a, a bounty on Nico after that last round. Contact have put up a wanted poster on Nico because they're not going to be happy with how that last round played out. But here we go. Nice kill, Esperanto, while blinded. And this B site is continuing to be a problem. They can't do anything to stop this from happening. Resistance is futile on the B site, apparently. Not a single kill for them. And this has got to be concerning for FaZe because, sure, Nico steps up and wins you that round. That's all well and good. But again, it's that B bomb site round after round that's been going against them. This time with a mid to B split, which is definitely much more difficult to deal with. But just those two players stuck on the B site there, it's very difficult to hold it down when you've got the split coming into B like that. Yeah, especially when you were kind of focusing on trying to prep up the B-bomb site defense for just the, the straight up hit, so they kind of had a little bit less focus around mid in general. It's been a tough one from them. Oh, I liked a bit. I hope you could still hear me right there. I did kind of disconnect from the for a second. My internet is just being weird sometimes. But yeah, Faye is, they can't afford to keep letting this happen. And if they're just trading back and forth at this point, obviously with their economy being the, with them being on the CT side, their economy is a lot more fragile. They have to spend that little bit extra to get the, to get the full investments. They don't have the ability to be getting bomb plants to boost it up, even if they are losing rounds, as of course the T side would. So this is an awkward spot to be in. With the money that they have available, they're willing now to at least take that one eco. They'll confirm a full buy in the next round. And obviously with what they saved over, they do still have a little bit here to work with. Brokey invested into a CZ. Either that or he's dropped by a teammate. Either way, he's not going to have it anymore. Cold Zero instead going to be finding that weapon. And here it is. Another B play just coming straight in from contact. They are going to swarm the bomb site. They are going to overcome all of the defense. Our Rain, who's able to get one kill before he goes down. But it is one round now that's in the difference between these two. That's all that separates them. Contact again, making it an overall competitive map. But as FaZe come back onto the full buy, this is where we say, okay, if they get this one, this is when it becomes a reality that they could be bringing this to a third map. 
18 seconds is all contacts needed to win that round with the B-Rush. They've got good B-spawns again here. I don't think it's going to be the B-Rush in this gun round, though. And again, it's the same two players committing to the B-site. A fair few players pushing tunnels for contacts, but they're not going to be going all the way through. A long presence gained by FaZe. That's a nice start to the round, because now they can maybe commit some more players to mid and short and maybe even b if they get this a long control they don't have to worry about that position so that would be a really nice start for them to maybe be able to put some of their forces elsewhere to maybe rotate some players away contact have replied with some short control of their own though and again nades being exchanged early but still basically no damage done in this round looking like again we're gonna see contact focus and probably on towards b at least at the moment they do want to try and probe around mid a little bit see what they can find in that area they've been slowed down though because Fayez are kind of putting a lot more of their players around this area they're using a lot of their utility as well to ensure that it's not gonna be an issue like it has been in these previous few rounds but the problem is they've used a lot of their own utility now they only have one smoke and some flashes remaining at this point and trying to flash in the peak on mid it does end up costing them rain gets dropped by the op of auto and that prompts what they're thinking is going to be a b split right now but of course that is not the case they're actually going to bring it up through short it didn't actually pull rotations off of a as of yesterday they do still have two in position can they get revenge on Nico? The AWP this time holding on the A-bomb site. He's been mollied out, but Olaf's here to help him. Olaf only gets one kill on the hold, and Nico burns to a crisp. Otto's molly gets the kill straight up. And now FaZe are going to have to save again. This time not on the B site, but from losing A without a single kill on... Well, well Olaf got that one kill, but without enough kills on the hold... And now it's 13-13. This game is getting closer and closer by the round. surprisingly i what was it it was 12 7 at one point i believe and i was like yeah i find that hard to believe that contact are going to be able to make the comeback happen here on a map that phase do feel good on that is the the choice of phase as well one that we were expecting them to come in and win pretty much no matter what in the series but no contact are making that comeback a reality they've got six of the last seven rounds now and they have been mostly just abusing the b-bomb site to be real but in this round switching it up using the fact that b-bomb site has been such an issue for phase and using kind of the the, the the kind of fact that they know that is going to be in the mind of phase to, to kind of sell out a little bit of a fake and keep two of those players in position for so long. Well, this is a great chance for contact to take the lead. Only two rifles saved over for phase pistols on the rest of the players. This is the kind of round where you can come up with a, a big adaptation where you can take a risk in switching up your setup. So we could see FaZe commit some players to B. Or we could see them try and fight mid. Making steps here. Oh, yes. Esperanto lines up the wallbang headshot onto Rain, who was just trying to run back to safety. Esperanto says no. That's a little bit unfortunate. Having mostly just pistols in this round only the two save the rifles obviously that you want to be able to try and find an opening kill in your favor not have it going the other way where you're putting the back foot in a four on five you're pretty much being forced to give up the b bomb site now as well as the contact comes in i would imagine brokey just backs away with that m4 what they do have full loss bonus of course but it's not like they can really do worthwhile damage because of the fact that contact do have such an incredible economy already Although you could have the pistols uh, obviously wait around and see if they can maybe retrieve a couple of weapons to just boost up this buy for phase a little bit in the next round with maybe some AKs. And obviously if they could get the op, that would be fantastic. But Contact have gone ahead and actually claimed themselves the lead now. Map 3 is beginning to actually look relatively likely at this point. If FaZe aren't able to come through with this next gun round, then it probably is confirmed. Nuke, I think, definitely would be an interesting one between these two. I, I don't know really what i'm going to be expecting of contact on it if i'm being honest i don't know if they'd be able to really get the win even if they do manage to bring it to map number three yeah i'm fairly certain i remember casting one of their games on nuke and i don't think i was too impressed from what i remember from the contact side whereas to be fair their d2 stats aren't great either yeah that's true that is true they haven't played dust to a single time in this tournament though all the mm. games are from a, a fair while ago Saving so, it for this moment, maybe. Maybe. Until they were 0 and 6 in groups. Well, 
this game isn't over yet. Double up set up out for contact on their T side here. Again, a fair few players over at B tunnels. I think Ships is just looking for the pick with the AWP, and if he got it, then maybe they commit to B. But it's still the same setup for FaZe. They're not budging. They're sticking with Cold Zero and Brokey on B. This is clearly what they've practiced, so you can understand why they're sticking with it. But if they lose B again, at some point you've got to feel like maybe it is worth changing it. Maybe it's worth putting an AWP here or something. We'll see, though, because Contact might not commit to the B site this time round. Currently focused on the mid control and face kind of fighting for short so that might be where the first engagement comes through in this round yeah very likely there's two players as you pointed out for phase that are looking to try and oh. challenge oh did esperanto not spot him initially i think the gun actually may have been blocking it the view model just the small bit but with nico of course being completely blinded he still could manage to recover in time Rain is then forced down into the spawn as well, actually getting tagged up quite heavily. Still finds a kill on Otto, but trying to swing back in. Too many players, they're actually peeking them, and Contact have done it. They've already confirmed the fifth... Uh, I was gonna say, they've already confirmed the 15th round. Ships was lurking out on B. Three on three, uh, do they want to go for it now? Actually, they may want to. They have the kits, they have a little bit of utility, and the bomb is only being planted. Yeah, they're at least gonna have a look to see if there's a way into this round, at a minimum. Emmy's got another smoke here, which he's going to drop on himself. Just sitting on the ramp. Here comes the push. Flashbang blinds Brokey. That was his teammate's flash, but the time is really, really low now. Esperanto gets a kill. Brokey eventually pulls the trigger, but it's not happening for FaZe. They try the retake, but try as they might, they can't get back onto the A-bomb site. Contact take a 15-13 lead and two map points here. What is going on, man? This has been crazy. FaZe have got, what, one of the last now eight, uh, one of the last nine rounds, I believe it's been, have gone in their favor. This has just been incredible. Yeah, no, sorry, one of the last eight. I was right the, the first time. Why did I doubt myself? God damn, hunk it. Never doubt yourself. But um, it could be one of the last nine. Maybe I was just predicting that contact. They're going to close this out 16 13. I, it wouldn't be a bad bet at this point, based on that recent record of rounds you were talking about. Alon control has been given away for free in this one. FaZe Clan not fighting for this area of the map. Nico's got the AWP on short. He's pushed all the way up. So at some point, you've got to think that FaZe will realize that this A long play is definitely a possibility. I think they're just assuming that Contact will use some nades if they try and push from long those, and that will give them a bit of a heads up and give them a chance to rotate back around. Look at the minimap though, the B tunnels push is coming in. That's gonna be all the information that FaZe Clan need. They must know this is an A long play now. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Rain actually drops the molly at a pretty good time. It won't be able to do a lot, unfortunately. Okay, actually some damage being done. Yeah, there was smokes down on it. It actually didn't extinguish it. You see Letney getting burned down. Emmy taking a decent amount of damage as well. And yeah, FaZe have set themselves up. They have a good idea about where this hit of course is going to be coming in. At this point, as the bomb is just about to be planted. But they're losing players. Contact have already gone down into a three on five. They have no idea that Olaf is on the bomb site pretty much alongside Emmy. Smoke down the long flank from Brokey. And this round is done. FaZe have gone ahead and finally gotten themselves another to do so really convincingly, which is a, a good sign. It, it's what they needed if they want to have a full buy in this next round. Otherwise, if they dropped to like a one-on-one -on -one or whatever, they could have been limited in weapons. But they still need one more, and that's just to confirm the overtime. Two orps now for FaZe Clan as well. That'll be interesting, because Cold Zero is going to be orping probably on the B side of the map. That's where he's been playing in most of these rounds. And you can definitely see a world where Contact try and go back to B to close this out here in round 30, because they've had a lot of success there. So I'm interested to see if Cold Zero's orp has any impact on how that B site gets played out. Maybe it will help FaZe lock down that side of the map. We'll wait and see if that's where Contact are even going, though, because they are the ones who have to make up their minds here in round number 30. We go the distance on Dust2, and Contact are just rushing up mid. They are very decisive here. Oh! Ooh. Esperanto taps the head of Cold Zero towards the window. Brokey and Rain, though, pulling back three kills on mid. What the hell is going on? Rain cannot be stopped. Otto tried to swing in, but with the Yop, he wasn't able to ring off the shot quite in time. Rain, he rains on the parade here of Contact as they are indeed going to be forced to fight to send it to a map three in an overtime instead of being able to close it during the regulation. Yeah, contact overlook, just that one position, that one little spot that you can push through the CT smoke and be safe in. 
And Rain makes them pay for it with all those kills. It was such a nice shot from Esperanto as well. That was against the AWP of Cold Zero, who was just holding from window. You think that that's the way in. You think that's the way they're going to get on to B. But Rain realized he had to do something. He couldn't just leave Brocky out to dry on the B bomb site alone. And he helped his teammate out in such a big way. And now we go into overtime. Here we go. Double AWP on the CT side will continue to come through. Otto has one for contact as well. And we get a nice slow start to this round. After getting shut down in that previous round, contact aside, they're not going to go quite as quickly this time. Yeah, slowing things down just a, a small bit here now. Knowing obviously that FaZe won't have any worries at all with their economy. Are we seeing aggression in tunnels? Yeah, Auto Director wasn't showing it to me, but I did notice it myself. I came over just as you actually did see a little bit of contact there, letting he bait it out the op shot. So he knows that they were pushing up at this point, but so far no kills to be found. At least until Nico peeks in towards middle. Able to drop auto, wins out the op duel, and gives FaZe a good start here into the overtime. Nico's all can't hold this A site now, though. So the A short push is coming in. He's trying to flash his way back in. Nico's not going to be very comfortable here with the AWP. He's got to be in trouble. Shots landing, and Nico's stuck behind that smoke. A long control is here for FaZe Clan, and here comes Olaf. Oh, Letney, how does he not hear those steps? Olaf gets the flank onto Letney, catching him off guard. And now Contact have a lot of work to do to hold this site in a 3v5. Yeah, not going to be an easy task, especially with no utility at all. I think they have used everything yet. None remaining. They end up getting blinded, actually, as the flash comes over long. Rain just has an easy time. Cleaning up two of them and with the help of Nico, they will indeed be able to close that round out phase. They do strike back after being able to pull back two rounds in a row to force it into the overtime. They have gone ahead and picked up the opening round for themselves as well, reclaiming the lead. Position that we've seen them lose a little bit back. And it can, be the economy can still become a worry here for contact if they're to lose this round. Going into the following, into the final one of this first half of the overtime, they could then be struggling onto a couple of players. It wouldn't be too big of a deal, it's more so on the CT side where you have to worry about it, but you would see obviously Otto, who's been buying up the ops, unfortunately being stuck onto a pistol most likely. Or maybe an SMG, so uh, ideally contact, if they want to have a, a good chance of recovering this half, they do want to be picking this one up, otherwise you could see FaZe even having a chance to sweep up all three CT rounds. Some of the fragging numbers on FaZe. Nico at 30 kills, Rain at 29, but it's Emmy who's got the first kill of this round. Olaf Meister trying to fight for A long. The flashes weren't good enough to get him across to pit safely. Contact. Well, it's a two man lead. Ships just taking fights through mid. Maybe going a bit too far as Rain eventually gets the refrag. And there are still two CTs on this B side of the map. And Contact seems somewhat aware of that. They're moving up through short. Brokey's there to stop them, but Otto picks up the trade. And now the A site is compromised. This is going to be a free bomb plant for Contact. As soon as this molly fades. Oh, Rain finds... Auto as he peeks into, in towards long. Now that's given actually a really good position for FaZe indeed in this two on two because they have the long control. They also have called Zero who's going to be working up true short. The only issue is obviously they can't really help each other out. It's going to come down to them winning out their individual fights. You see the T's are focused together right now. Esperanto watching for the short peak. They have Emmy then watching to ensure that that player crossing over long will be challenged, but he was able to actually make it over without being spotted, I believe. On the bomb site, Cold Zero pops out from short and is going to take down Esperanto, and now it's all on Emmy. He's in such an awkward spot, trying to get back up to stop that defuse was pretty much impossible, especially as Cold Zero just peeked back in. Yeah, just not the best position for Emmy to be in to try and play the bomb there, unfortunately. I Nicely done go to Faze, short. Though. Yeah. It would have made sense if, they, sense if they went and tried to get the short control rather than dropping down and trying to hold it from CT. Because they obviously they knew there was one player on long, so I figured, yeah, once they started walking in that direction, they were going to just go get short together to play from. But they dropped. It was, that was a strange decision. Uh, decision. They still have a pretty good buy here, thanks to the bomb plant. Interesting switch up of the orbs. Oh, wow. What a shot from Nico. Very quick on the trigger, spotting Esperanto. I was about to say that uh, Cold Zero, who had been orping, has given it over to Brocky this time. But I don't know if that's going to matter, because Nico's AWP apparently is the one to watch, as Cold Zero's rifle also comes into play through the smoke. Nico lands a shot again. That's the bomb dropped. And Nico hungry for more. He lands that shot just before going down. 
Great work again from Nico with the sniper. And Rain will tap away to close. Ahead and close out the map. And in the case of FaZe, close out the series and take a 2 to 0. Leaving contact, unfortunately, sitting 0 and 7 in the group. As we had pointed out, obviously, this matchup doesn't have any effect on the, the kind of groups anymore. FaZe have won all of their games up to this point, so they've confirmed their first spot. Uh, uh, no matter what, but there is all the other games that are going on, which I haven't actually kept up with. We will have to have a look over there in a moment and see how they've gone, but right now, a fight over towards Long is the goal for FaZe. They flash out, they get a one-for-one -one trade initially, and give themselves a, a position where they can probably just slow this down now, because they have so much time, a one-for-one, -one, as has been mentioned, I'm sure, many times by every single caster, is going to be favorable for the T side. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Oh, the timing for ships. I was going to say he could pull one back. They're going to be caught off guard. He actually manages to get the kill. How the hell is Esperanto the one who dies there? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. FaZe have got to overcome a 2v3 then. Cold Zero and Brokey left in this one. Cold Zero solo pushing mid. Oh, ships was very low on health there. One shot would have done it. But it's all on Brokey with the AWP moving up to the A site. There's maybe some fights he can take, but the Molotov gives away his position. He's looking to try and find a fight that's favorable. The Molotov gives him enough cover so he can cross behind the car. Oh, Brocky's really trying to... Okay then, nice shot from Brocky. I was going to say trying to play the mind games here, but now he crosses to the bomb site safely just as Ships goes off the angle. Fake plant from Brocky. Second shot is good, and it's into the one versus one against Letney. Letney's flanking from long. Brocky's not ready for this right now. He's looking at short... Oh, Brocky, he does check long. He gets the information. And now Brocky is just going to go for it. He goes for the fight and wins it. Huge 1v3 